Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation called Scientific Machine Learning for Structures. My name is Axel Larsen and I'm an intern at TNL Delft. I'm doing this internship as part of my master thesis at the Bartlett School of Architecture. The topic is predicting bridge behavior using scientific machine learning. We're considering steel bridges, which are typically exposed to cyclical loads in the form of traffic. These cyclical loads de leads to material fatigue, and as a result of this, cracks may develop, and also um, eventually the bridge can actually fail due to material fatigue. So therefore it's very important to know the fatigue life of a bridge, um, and that, that means how long the bridge will last without failing due to material fatigue. And in order to predict the fatigue life, we need to be able to make accurate structural predictions of bridges. And there are a number of ways that we can do this. For instance, we can have a physics-based approach in which we typically create a finite element model. And uh, if we want to improve our predictions, we make a more detailed model. But this uh, typically means that we'll have to uh, work more with the model. Um, we could also use a data-driven approach in which we use data to make predictions. And if we want to improve our predictions, we basically need more data. And the data is often in the form of measurements. And in the case of a bridge, one puts sensors on the bridge that uh, records the structural behavior. Um, if we want more data, then we need more sensors. And this also means more work. Uh, scientific machine learning combines a data-driven model with physical knowledge and this has been shown in other studies to reduce the data need for the model. And we are interested in a model that needs as little data and as little prior knowledge as possible in order to accurately predict the structural behavior of a bridge. For this purpose we compare two different approaches, a scientific machine learning one and a data-driven one. We compare them for two cases, a synthetic case where we have access to a ground truth and a real world case where the measurements are a bit more messy, so to say. Uh, the data that we have are in the shape of influence lines. And an influence line can be described as the response of a sensor due to a moving load. So when the truck moves over the bridge, it induces a stress at the point of the sensor, which is the highest when the truck is above the sensor. As it uh, goes over the support, the stress at the sensor goes to zero. And then as it continues to the other span, the stress changes sign. Um, so in, in the real life, uh, we usually perform load tests uh, with sensors, and then we get these sort of influence lines. For our model formulations, we consider a two-gather bridge with a deck. If the deck is loaded by a point load, the uh, load will be distributed to the two girders and if we add up the two point loads uh, at the girders we get back the same point load as was applied to the bridge deck. Uh, for the scientific machine learning formulation we only explicitly model one of the girders using physics and then we use a neural network to approximate what portion of the applied load on the deck that goes to one of the girders. And uh, this image show how we make a prediction of an influence line using a scientific machine learning model. So at each, each point uh, where the load is applied, the equivalent load is uh, uh, the equivalent load on the girder is calculated, and then the girder uh, is used to create the influence line prediction. The rest of the bridge is not explicitly modeled. In the data-driven formulation, we do not incorporate any knowledge of the physics of the bridge. Instead, we try to directly predict the influence line from the load locations. So in order to show what happens on a more computational level, in the scientific machine learning case, a neural network feeds into a finite element solver, and the finite element solver then makes a prediction, uh, which together with data and other boundary constraints are used to uh, train the model itself. And in order to do this, as you can see, we need to be able to differentiate through the whole model chain. And this is where Julia and its uh, packages like Diffie Flux comes in handy. For the data-driven model, we, we only use a neural network in order to make predictions, which we 
then together with the data used to fit the model. And some results. So if we want to fit the data in the form of uh, one influence line, uh, this is possible to do with both the models accurately. If we want to uh, predict another influence line, possibly due to uh, another moving load uh, in, a, in another lane of the bridge, and using only one influence line as data, uh, neither of the models can do this accurately. Uh, instead, we need additional information in order to make a, a good fit. But this is possible for both of the models. If we want to predict an influence line at another sensor, the SciML model is able to do this accurately, but for the data-driven model, this is uh, not possible to do accurately at all. And if we then extrapolate to the case when we want to predict all the influence um, lines at, at, the, um, at the sensor or the influence surfaces, the data-driven model can uh, make an accurate prediction, but the SciML model makes a very accurate prediction. If we want to predict an influence surface at another sensor, then the data-driven model uh, cannot make an accurate prediction at all. The SciML model makes uh, a very good prediction. Uh, we tried this for a real-world case in which we had 10 sensors of data and we fitted the, the models to a subset of these uh, of the data and we tried to predict the missing, the missing information. And uh, the data-driven model shown here uses uh, nine out of the 10 sensors for data fitting, and it tries to predict one, the, the lost sensor, so to say, and it is able to do that quite good for, the, for sensor number two, but for sensor number seven, it doesn't work so well. So for certain sensors, it's good, for certain sensors, it's bad. And for the scientific machine learning model, we're able to basically get the same performance as the data-driven one, but using only one sensor instead of nine. And for the case of sensor seven, the scientific machine learning uh, model doesn't make a good prediction, but it still makes a prediction that is consistent with physics. Uh, so to conclude, in a synthetic case, the SIML model has a high prediction accuracy and an ability to generalize. For a real-world case, the SIML model uh, performs better than the data-driven one, but it's still not as good as in the synthetic case. An improved model formulation might bring better results in the future. So, thank you for listening. I hope it was an interesting presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at the email address provided below. Uh, I wish you a great day and enjoy the rest of JuliaCon. Thank you.